ghastly fast. Ultra luxurious. And a monster price tag. For 70 years, BMW has produced some of the best cars in the world. Now, they're putting their reputation on the line. Betting millions on a brand new sports car. For the first time ever, go behind the scenes where no one has gone before. From design studios in California to test tracks around the world. Inside the world's most secretive sports car building process. Buckle up. It's a very bumpy road that's about to end on the production line. It began as a sketch. An idea on a piece of paper. Elegant lines. Sleek shapes. The perfect marriage of great design and classic engineering. The days are over that uh, the designer can uh, just do a design and then the engineer has to figure it out. Uh, we now produce and develop cars uh, in three years time. That's very fast. And we can only do that uh, when we as designers communicate with the engineer. Bringing a car into the world is, is like bringing a baby into a world. A man can't do it alone, a woman can't do it alone. You kind of got to, you need both of them. And if they do it with a lot of love, it works a lot better. It's taken years, but designers and engineers at BMW are close to turning that dream into reality. From Africa to Tokyo, they've tested prototypes of the car pushing it in chilling cold and choking heat. Now mass production is about to begin on what BMW has been calling the E63. The rest of the world will soon know it as the 645 CI. The BMW headquarters are in Munich. The new sports car will come to life about a hundred kilometers away in the town of Dingelfing. It's home to one of the largest automobile factories in the world. Hans Glas is the factory manager. The town of Dingelfing itself has only 18,500 inhabitants, but there are 24,000 people working at the factory. So we had to find a solution and we came up with our commuter system. About 16,000 commuters travel 40,000 kilometers back and forth to work. It's as if the buses circled the earth once every day. More than 2,000 different workers will be involved in making every single car. Intensive training is required for each one of those workers. The focus of this car is precision. BMW wants it to compete with high-end Mercedes and Jaguars. Every single part of the new vehicle will have to be perfect. Workers are trained in Munich. A miniature car factory has been assembled here called the Pilot Plant. Mistakes can be made here, lessons learned before the car itself goes into full production. Computer simulations are used as well. Planners can map out the entire production process, identifying problems before they become reality. All of the individual parts of a new car also live in the computer. And they can be used to simulate every step of the construction process. This is production hall 52, 
where the 645 CI will be built. To get ready for the new car, the plant is being expanded. Already two different BMW models are built here, but the new sports car is pushing the limits of the factory. The workers here are under pressure too. The most fun I have with my work is actually the contact with other people, to see how enthusiastic they can become. They're very ambitious, and they naturally want to achieve the goal that has been set for them. One thing I've always noticed here is the incredibly strong way our workers identify with the plant and their product. Workers at the plant are the last line of defense. If things aren't working properly, if the vehicle isn't perfect, they're the last ones who can catch the mistakes. Today, they're taking the lessons learned at the pilot plant and putting them into practice. The new sports car has more than 20,000 separate parts. The entire assembly process must be retooled to make it. The plant isn't ready to start making the car yet. For now, Foreman must make sure every single part of the sequence works. What they find are problems. Each sticker indicates a mistake that has to be corrected before actual production begins. BMW has spent millions just designing this new car. Company executives visit the plant frequently to make sure nothing goes wrong now. They want to unveil the car at auto shows in the fall and winter. Missing deadlines could force the company to cancel those shows and raise doubts about the quality of the new car. The success of the new car will depend on getting dealers around the world excited about it. Select BMW dealers are brought to Germany to see a prototype. It's a closed door, top secret presentation, a fashion show for the car set. Two minutes away from one. Car dealers are like seismographs. Their reaction is a first hint of how the new car will be received by the public at large. It has a powerful engine, advanced steering. But what the dealers really need to sell is the car's luxury. It will have a price tag of $100,000. For that kind of money, consumers will want to be pampered. This is the first time the dealers have seen the car they'll have to sell in a few months. Their impressions will help fuel the first wave of publicity. To really help sell the car, the new 645 CI is about to take a trip to France. The Côte de Jure, southern France. A heady mix of beauty and wealth. The new BMW coupe is here and it's ready for its close-up. The pictures taken today will help sell the new car around the world. Just like a human face, a car has its best side. A style guide has been developed that gives exact instructions on just how the new car should be photographed. The new car is aimed at the very rich. It has a price tag of about $100,000. These pictures will have to sell that image of wealth and glamour. This isn't an actual 645 CI, just a handmade prototype. Mass production is still several months away. In fact, the car is still top secret. As soon as the photo shoot is over, it's quickly covered up again. Developing a sales brochure is only one small part of a massive marketing campaign planned for this new car. Millions have been spent on designing the car. Millions more will be spent making sure they sell when they're finally made. BMW sales staff from around the world are brought to Germany. Hidden from the inquisitive eyes of the press, they're briefed on how best to push the car. For most of these people, this is their first contact with the new coupe. I would really like to ask you not to take any photos. 
because the car has not been launched at the press, nothing else, and we want to continue with these events, and we know you guys know this. This is a car that is supposed to compete with high-end Mercedes and Jaguars. It's an incredibly competitive market. Jürgen Korzer and his team are responsible for breaking into that market and coming out on top. We've been planning this for so long, and now the time has come. Now we can actually go out and do the job. Getting the job done down on the ground, as we say. From now on, everything is going to be a bit more fast-paced, more hectic, and more exciting. Before they can sell it, the sales team need to get a better feel for the car. The important thing now is that the product and launch managers finally get to drive the car and make a live comparison. Experience has shown how important it is to actually drive the cars. This is especially true of the 6 Series. BMW's slogan is, the ultimate driving machine. It's a hard thing to promote if you haven't driven the car yourself. concentrate on something called the direct switch. That means hopping from the BMW right into a Jaguar, then back into the BMW. The sales staff get to act like test drivers, accelerating, taking curves at top speed, and braking hard. It's an exciting day of driving. Well, this is a car that in the U.S. customers have been waiting for for 15 years because that's when the last six series was sold. So they have very high expectations about the agility and the sportiness. So you really want to promote the performance of the car, the fact that it's very agile, very easy to drive, and that you can drive it very aggressively and fun every single day. In the same way that a new automobile has to make test drives, The machines that make it have to go through test runs before the car can be produced. Robots are a vital part of this process. All have to be taught their new jobs. In a few months, this factory will have to mass produce thousands of cars. All have to be exactly the same. Getting the robots working properly is the only way the company can meet the demand they hope the new car will create. Every part that leaves this workstation is immediately examined. Measurements are taken down to the last millimeter. Robots check themselves to make sure everything is right. My ideal factory is one in which you can realize the goals you've set for yourself. By that I mean production level, costs, and above all, quality. The new 645 CI isn't like other BMW cars. It's a unique combination of aluminum and steel. New welding, riveting, and adhesive techniques all had to be designed to build the automobile. The newly trained robots are finally up to the job. But it can't all be done by machine. The most difficult welding joints in the front section still have to be done by hand. No robot has been able to master the enormous variety of movements that are necessary to do this work. One of the many intriguing parts of the new car is an aluminum tube that connects the motor and the instrument panel. In the past, aluminum tubes like this had a very limited use. 
the shapes were confined to whatever could be welded or pressed or bent. Today, high pressure is used inside the tube to form them into shapes that were impossible several years ago. The new technology helps the car slim down. Frames and axles made this way can be 35% lighter, but still be as firm as in the past. Along with new mixtures of steel and aluminum, the 645 CI has also taken a page from Formula One racing. A sequential manual gearbox, or SMG, is an option on the new coupe. It copies the style of shifting perfected on the tracks of the Formula One circuit. The F1 cars are faster, but the new coupe boasts that it can go from 0 to 60 in a little more than 5 seconds. And just like Formula One, the heart of the new sports car is its engine. The 8-cylinder motor produces the power and performance demanded by the people who will buy this car. While robotics are the key to the body of the car, fine craftsmanship remains an essential part of making motors. Constant testing of the engine ensures it will perform on the road. even in ways it likely won't ever be put to the test after it leaves the factory. Patricia Gellis Schroeder is responsible for the new sports car's engine. So far, she likes what she hears. The driving performance has clearly been improved. We're doing pretty well, even better than we'd planned at the beginning of the project. There's still some fine-tuning we have to do on the exhaust system to get the sound just right. What the sound says about us has to be what we want it to say. No one wants an engine that sounds small or underpowered. The right sound is as important to customers as the right look. To make sure that sound is being produced, careful recordings are made. To hear properly, all other sources of noise are minimized. Tape covers anything that could rattle or hum and interfere with the rumble of the engine. The sound of the car needs to be recorded, not just so engineers can decide if it purrs like a sports car should. The engine needs to meet certain standards for both noise and emissions. This car is the first one to be tested using the exhaust system that will soon be mass produced and placed into the 645 CI. The microphones record a dense, powerful sound. Volume and emissions are within legal limits. For both the convertible and the hardtop, we've managed to achieve the goals we set for ourselves. So that when you're going high speed on a country road, the driver can really hear the driving noises. But when you're driving at normal speed on an expressway, let's say you're driving at 70 miles per hour, we want you to hear a balanced mixture of wind, rolling noise, and driving noise. Okay. And if there's a particularly strong engine load, then we want that to be clearly heard inside the car as well. While engineers are happy about the sound of the car, the production line is about to get an unpleasant surprise. After years of design and testing, an important part of the car won't fit. 
Production Hall 52 at one of BMW's largest plants. So-called pre-series models of the company's new sports car have been made. Before mass production begins, each of these pre-series cars must be tested. If a mistake creeps in now, it will be repeated thousands of times. They're testing, and they're looking for mistakes. The kind of thing an especially critical buyer might notice. They also look at things a purchaser would probably never see. That means they really look under the lining and paneling. Test driver Stefan Menneker takes a pre-series convertible out for a spin. Over 30 kilometers at high speeds, he tests everything. During the stopover, he tries to put the windows up. He can't. Imagine buying a $100,000 car where the windows don't work. Back at the factory, they already know about the problem. Engineers say they can fix it in two weeks. Not everything can be manufactured at the main BMW plant. There are just too many parts. A subcontractor works on the instrument panel, painstakingly molding individual pieces of leather together. Das ist prima. This is the master pattern. If mistakes are made here, they will show up in every single car that's made. This version of the instrument panel will never get near the inside of a car. When the work is finally done, a metal impression of this panel will be made. It's this metal version of the panel, essentially a mold, which will be used to make the dashboards that will be seen in cars around the world. Another company is responsible for the next step of the process. When the metal impression arrives, it's put to work. A plastic skin protecting it is removed. Then a robot pours a thick mass of material into the mold. Heat causes the material to expand and turn into foam. The instrument panel begins to take on its shape. Each panel is again inspected with hand and eye. When it's been cut and welded, it's then sent to the assembly division. Here, the panel is prepared for the installation of the heating and air conditioning, the navigation system and the radio, the CD player and the onboard computer. The parts for the instrument panel have arrived from BMW's main plant. Like a giant jigsaw puzzle, they have to fit perfectly into the spaces created for them. With all the measuring and checking, design and engineering, nothing should go wrong. But something happens that no one expected. One of the speakers doesn't fit into the hole created for it. It's a half a millimeter too big. A new smaller speaker will have to be found. Work comes to a halt. The company has promised a new part. 
by the end of the week. Outside, more tests are underway. The motor which puts up the roof has to work silently. It can't produce the slightest unwanted sound. An acoustics expert listens carefully. Out on the special track, the new car is spared nothing. Every one of the pre-series models gets checked here at the factory. Each vehicle undergoes a comprehensive quality program that can take up to 12 days to complete. The tester believes he heard a small, unwanted noise inside the car. He can't tell where it's coming from. Once again, the convertible is put through its paces in the lab. Using a special microphone, the expert tracks down the source of the rattle. It's a barely perceptible sound coming from the glove compartment. But a report is still made to the development department so that they can substitute an improved part. Finally, it's off to the showers. In the specially designed climate chamber, 3,500 liters of water come crashing down on the convertible in just 10 minutes. A tropical storm inside the factory. The car is tipped and tilted. No water should be getting in. The inside of the car remains dry, but engineers notice that there's moisture where the foldable roof gets stored. The rubber ceiling leaks. Another problem that will have to be cleared up. The engineers at the factory are running out of time, and they're still finding things to fix. Mass production will begin shortly. Soon we're going to have a presentation. We've taken one of the pre-series models and tested it as thoroughly as possible so that we can then decide whether it's ready for mass production or not. The decision on when to start building will be made by senior BMW management. They've already picked a date for the hardtop, but the convertible could be delayed. What I noticed was the coat of paint. On the side up there toward the front, there are still a few little things. The side seems slightly cloudy, as though the paint hadn't been homogenous enough. Another thing is around the mirror triangle and side wall by the door. I think the gaps could be improved. And then the rubber ceiling on the roof cover. That still isn't 100% tight. We'll have to make it perfect. The whole point of my work is to make sure that it's the customers who return to the dealer, and not the cars. Not only do they have to show the car to BMW management, but the annual auto shows are looming, where BMW wants to unveil the 645 CI. Production like this will have to start soon, or the car won't be ready for people to buy. From the beauty of the Côte du Jour to the pages of a catalog, BMW's new sports car is ready to be sold around the world. We were on the Côte du Jour, beautiful, elegant. Here, in the context of these speedboats, which once again emphasize the whole idea of power. Then here, I have the element of sea spray, and then a beautiful still shot where we really show the signs. What you see here, that's a normal door. It's like this. And then this car is simply incredible. The sales team is ready, but will the car be finished in time? Finally, the flag has been dropped at one of BMW's largest factories. Mass production of the company's new sports car is underway. Enormous sheets of steel and aluminum are brought in. Each can weigh as much as 35 tons. The sheets are cut and stacked for later use. Enormous presses form the sheets into parts of the car's body. Roofs, side frames and floor plates begin to appear. This machinery can produce more than 300,000 parts every day. Robots begin adding lighter elements to the new car. Whether welded, bolted or glued, 
Nearly 500 individual parts come together to form the skeleton of the car. The robots make over 5,000 welds on each body. Then the basic structure is ready for painting. Painting this car is especially challenging. It's made of steel, aluminum, and plastic. And yet the paint has to look the same, no matter what surface it goes on. First, the car is cleaned, and then rotated through the primer. The car is turned 12 times in various tanks, 12 somersaults that help give every spot an even coating. Putting a first layer on in this way ensures the car has a uniform base. It's also environmentally friendly. Rotation dipping significantly reduces the amount of waste and waste chemicals produced. Once the car is dried and cleaned, it receives a total of four coats of paint and enamel. Elaborate precautions are taken to prevent even a single grain of dust from getting on the car. This area of the factory is as clean as any operating room. There is no particular order in which the cars are produced. This 645 hardtop is going to be black, but the next car could be a completely different color. For the robots, switching colors is no problem at all. It takes 18 hours to finish the painting. What happens next is a bit of scientific magic. Lacquer, to give the car a brilliant shine, is applied as a powder. It's given a charge, like static electricity, to bind it to the car. The car is grounded and attracts the powder like a magnet. Very little powder is wasted. Any powder that doesn't stick to the car is recycled, pumped back, and reused. When it's applied, the lacquer is white. But when heated to 140 degrees centigrade, the powder turns clear. The color underneath shines through. When the body passes the critical eye of a painting specialist, it's sent down to the factory's assembly line. For the first time, the new BMW sports car is rolling through the factory. All the bugs have been worked out. Now, the company holds its breath to see if the public likes it. It's showtime for the new BMW sports car. For two weeks every September, the International Automobile Show in Frankfurt is the focus of the whole industry. BMW has just published the first official photographs of the new 645 CI. Now the veil has finally been lifted completely. Both a convertible and a hardtop of this model have been designed. But so far, just the hardtop is ready for the public. For the first time, thousands of journalists and visitors get a look at the real thing. It draws the public like a magnet. While it is popular, very few will be able to afford it. The new car costs about $100,000. Despite the price, many of these first models are already spoken for. In fact, the cars now rolling off the line at the BMW factory are being shipped quickly all over the world. But after all the sophisticated technology used in building the basic car, human workers now become vitally important. The company has received special orders from customers who want to be at the front of the line. These workers make sure each car is finished in exactly the right way.
They need about 20 minutes to install all the parts of the instrument panel. In all, more than 20,000 separate pieces come together to make the 645 CI. To keep the assembly line moving, supplies are constantly brought to each workstation. Computers monitor the progress of each and every car. Bigger sections, such as the axles, motors, and undercarriage, are brought to the car pre-assembled to help speed up construction. From Frankfurt, the new car is rolled into Malaga, Spain. Here, the 645 CI will be unveiled again, this time for reporters from car magazines, daily newspapers, and TV shows. The opinions formed today could be the difference between success or failure for the new car. After years of hard work, millions of dollars in designing and testing, what happens on this one day is critical. These journalists need to be impressed for the new car to take off. And there's only one way to really do it. Like the test drivers before them, the journalists need to get behind the wheel to form their opinions. As the first two take their car out, senior managers from BMW look nervously on. You going in on that? Yeah. Good zero. workers don't have time to worry about reviews. It's their job to keep the cars rolling off the line so there will be enough to fill dealerships around the world. Once it gets to this stage, assembly takes just 12 hours. It's an incredible pace. But it only works now because it was tested and perfected during the months of trials and dry runs. Even when they're put together, the cars still don't leave the factory. Each vehicle rolls off the assembly line and over to the testing stations. The steering system is the first thing to be examined. A checklist is carefully followed. Every part of the car is tested once again. Without actually moving, the car is accelerated to 150 kilometers an hour. On the plant floor, the paint is polished and checked. Levers and buttons on the inside are tried once more. Managers walk the line to ensure nothing is missed. These cars are the result of more than three years of hard work. This is a marvelous vehicle. It's nice to make a contribution to make it absolutely flawless. With a final adjustment to the headlights, the car is on its way. In the course of production, it's been touched by more than 2,000 people here in the factory. Of course, the final test 
will come out in the real world. And for a car that's supposed to compete with Mercedes and Jaguars, the toughest market is the United States. A cold winter's day in Detroit. BMW's new sports car is having its premiere at the North American International Auto Show. Years of development. Millions already spent in design and testing. The success of this car depends on how it's received right now. World premiere here in Detroit. Ladies and gentlemen, this, what will be revealed now, is a new interpretation of the ultimate driving machine. First the hard top and then the convertible are unveiled. For almost four years, this car has existed only as an idea. Drawings became clay models, then prototypes. The look of the car changing subtly along the way. But now, finally, the real thing. A car that was long awaited is now receiving praise and attention from around the world. You just feel happy about it. I can't really say that I'm relieved because I always knew it would be a success. I'm happy the reaction has been so positive. It's been like in a maternity ward. We may not have given birth to any children, but now I can imagine what it must be like. Adrian Van Hoydonk designed the exterior and what feels to him like another lifetime. This is the first time he's ever seen the car he created. We've been looking forward to, to it for some years, some three years or so. Uh, last I saw the car, it was in clay, and now to see it in, uh, in metal and uh, with a crowd around it is a good feeling, it's great. Yeah, everybody that worked on the car uh, has been looking forward to this moment. Unfortunately, not everybody that worked on it can be here, so I feel quite good that uh, you know, I was able to be here and, and witness it firsthand, it's cool. Uh, what's also going to be cool is to see the car out on the road in its natural habitat. I'm looking forward to that. Chris Bangle was in charge of the design, both inside and out. It began for him as a concept car, something that would never be mass-produced. But now, it's a reality. It's, it's the birth. It's, it's a nice feeling like that. And we're kind of the mothers in that whole thing. Not the father, maybe. A lot of fathers. But maybe we're the mother of the whole process. And the six was born beautifully. It really came on really nice on the people. And when you think four years earlier, we showed the Z9 GT concept car and how radical that was then. And now, as a six series, perfect. That's nice. That's a good feeling. It's taken years to go from first idea to final product. The work of thousands of people all focused on a single goal, the birth of a new sports car. Now there's nothing more they can do. The new BMW 645 CI is on its own. What began as a mere watercolor drawing has come to life to take its place in the history of BMW and on roads around the world. <laughs>